first voiceover. Here goes. Well, I've been home almost 10 days from my trip to Grafton, Illinois, and it's taken this long to put together this video. On September 12th, I boarded a plane headed to St. Louis, Missouri, where I met my friend Tina, who I had convinced just a few weeks prior to join me at the Midwest Moto Meetup. This was a, an event organized by a group of guys who had met through YouTube. They were all moto vloggers, and I decided that I really wanted to attend this meetup. Our first night started with a slight rescue, hardly any food, none actually, and a little bit of drinking. So the next morning we were definitely looking for food, coffee, and it was time to pack up and head to our first campsite. Camp Potawatomi. This was gonna be our home for the next three nights. Beautiful campground, a little treacherous to get to on a motorcycle, it was all a windy little gravelly dirt road and uh, the bug population definitely outnumbered the humans and it was pretty much a smorgasbord for the bugs and there were millipedes and when you step on one they make a rather gross sound more campers and riders began showing up that morning a little later into the afternoon and I think our total head count at one point in time was about 25 people um, and the more people that showed up the, the more I could tell this was just going to be an epic event and so happy that I could have been part of the first one some of the the humor that was going around the campsite definitely not for all ears but I swear if you could can that stuff we'd all be rich because I don't think it's legal to laugh as much as we did on this trip. Ninety-one dinosaurs. When it was raining, did you take your gas cap off for about ten minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Let it all pour just, right in there. Just, uh, just put a funnel in there. So quick rewind to Thursday night. After Tina and I had gotten to the campsite, we had texted Joe to let him know we were um, on our way or already there, and he was having some bike trouble, and by the time we got to campsite, he wasn't there yet. He texted to say that he, we'd need to come get him. So um, we took the long way around to come get him because we, we definitely got lost. We made a wrong turn into some cornfields, ended up on a dirt road that was actually a real road, and found Joe in some little corner place. Oh, it was actually called Kathy's Corner, by the way, and he ended up having to leave his bike there for the night because it wouldn't start up. But fortunately, we were, we were there, and we picked him up, and that was the first time I met him. And Joe did get his bike back the next day, and they did get it fixed, and I have a couple of pictures of the guys working on it there, and thank God he did because... That leads to the next piece of this, which was early on when I originally signed up to do this. Joe contacted me to let me know my reservation had been accepted and asked if I was going to rent a bike, and I told him I was not. And um, he made a proclamation at that time saying, well, I'll let you ride mine. And I... I think I was pretty speechless, you know, even though it was an email and probably said something back. I obviously responded and and as you can see, I I got to ride the iconic Rosanati on a section of Route 66 that Joe covered in his videos. And um but that that was such an honor. Uh, you know, nobody expects that. I know a lot of people who never let anybody touch their bike, let alone one that Joe's got a pretty darn special relationship with. Anyhow, so how did I get here? As most of you know, I'm pretty new to writing 
And in my quest to gain knowledge and understand my own obsession with, with writing, I often resort to YouTube binging. And a few months back, gosh, it's been a year at least, to the day, almost, anyhow, I stumbled across a channel with this really mild-mannered, easy-going guy who was recording his travels across the country on a Harley Sportster Iron 883, and he was traveling across Route 66, something that I've always wanted to do. And I, I came across him in a clip that was pretty much in the middle of his journey. And uh, I, I watched this video and was agreeing with pretty much everything he was saying about how cool it is to meet people and be on the road and the countryside he was seeing. And then he got quiet and just let out a laugh. And then he um, explained what that laugh meant because I think it even shocked him and it was just that realization about how epic it was to be on the bike and experience that kind of freedom and see the things that he was seeing and, and it was just the culmination of, of the trip right then and there for him and for me so this video that I watched to Joe's was not the start of his journey so I went back and watched the series from beginning and when he rode his last few miles I felt just about like I did when Game of Thrones ended. I was like, now what? And I said, well, now it's your turn. It's your turn. And this was before I did my Grand Canyon trip. Now I get to do the Grand Canyon trip. And I know it's possible. I know it's possible because Joe did it.
Tina and I were perfectly content driving around in the very air-conditioned car because it was hot as hell and humid and um, we just ran support and it was great. We would pull up to various stops and throw up in the back of the vehicle and everybody throw in their jackets, they'd throw in their helmets, grab some water and um, that's how I ended up uh, not being in a car for day two. I said yes. This was the biggest bike I'd ever ridden. Um, I don't know anything about it other than the fact that it was a road king. And without hesitation, um, I got on that bike. Maybe that wasn't a great idea, was a good idea, I don't know, but I wasn't going to pass it up. I, I just had to get on that bike. And I don't regret doing so. It was a great day. Both bikes I ran, I got to ride them for hours. Uh, I was shocked. I was like, what planet is this? Who am I? How can I possibly be doing this? So, in a nutshell, this was an amazing trip. And there's a group of five guys out there. They each have their own YouTube channels. They are now running a podcast that is absolutely hysterical. And I have to give a big shout out to a group of guys that I truly do call a friend. And that would be Joe at Great Egret. Thanks for letting me ride Rosanati. Dustin, D-Cycle, you have the planning and organizing skills of a girl. I'm sorry, I, that's a true compliment because most guys would have messed that up 10 times upside down and sideways there wouldn't have been any food the cabins would have been all locked um, but you handled it uh, amazing I'm super impressed and it was just fantastic Tony Ryan Mike you guys are some of the funniest words I can't say out loud people I have ever had the pleasure to spend more than 24 hours with. In fact, I, my laugh bones hurt. I, whether it was my cheeks, my ribs, uh, I didn't care that I was being eaten to death by bugs out there because I could the one-liners were hysterical. For those of you that want to know, there was somebody so hungry on this trip, as we're staring at a picture of people getting ready to eat breakfast, that he was willing to crawl up a chicken's butt to get himself an egg sandwich. When those words came out of Tony's mouth, had I been drinking anything, I would not have been much longer. There were a few other one-liners thrown out there, but probably not for any normal consumption. So I will wrap this up now that we're at the 10 minute mark and I think I've shown enough pictures, give you guys enough backstory, but this was one amazing weekend. I will definitely be at MMM 2020, even though I have plans to hit Sturgis um, because I wouldn't miss this for the world and I can't wait to see all these guys again and make new friends and see old friends, people that traveled all the way from DC and um, gosh, I think the person that traveled the furthest was like 1,100 miles on a motorcycle. We flew, so that doesn't count. 
And next year we'll probably fly again too, but that's fine. Um, I do want to say that my experience there has opened a new door for me. I have since come home and traded in Piglet. Piglet will always hold emotions. A place in my heart because that bike got me riding again after an incident and I built up my confidence on that bike in a short period of time so again I have a lot a lot to learn and I'm not done learning I will never be done learning and uh, but I did trade the piglet in she's back on the little hog farm and I'm sure she'll have a good life training somebody else how to be a great rider and I am now riding my new bike which is a 2015 Sportster XL 1200T. T is for touring, which is a beautiful bike, a little bit more power. And um, I am going to prepare for Sturgis and the rest of the riding that I can do here in California, very fortunately, for almost all of the year. And um, stay tuned for some more videos because uh, there's more trips planned. And thanks for listening to me blather on. And uh, again, stay tuned. Thanks.